Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church, located in Charlotte, North Carolina. St. Mark's is a historic congregation of the ELCA that unconditionally welcomes all people of all ethnicities, genders, identities, and backgrounds. There's a place for you at St. Mark's. We are conveniently located in Myers Park on Queens Road, just south of Charlotte's Uptown and adjacent to the Duke Mansion and the greenery of Edge Hill Park. St. Mark's Church building is easy to find with its marble Christus Victor, while inside, the mid-century design of the sanctuary reaches upward, inspiring us with Christ's blessing and beautiful stained glass windows featuring all the people of God in all their diversity. There is a place for you at St. Mark's.
morning. Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church. Today is the 10th Sunday in the time after Pentecost, the time when we remember growth in the Holy Spirit and trust in God's promises. Today we remember that we are fed and forgiven at the Lord's table to serve others. We remember that God always works through our hands. Well, I'd like to say a warm welcome to any visitors who are worshiping with us this morning. Your presence among us is a blessing to us. I have a couple of announcements as we begin. Uh, this month, the month of August, uh, we're, Les and I are calling All Creation Sings Month because both of our services um, are, are borrowed from or being used uh, from the All Creation Sings worship resource. The 830 service is usually primarily from that um, fortress publication, but during uh, August, the 1030 service has parts of that uh, service as well incorporated into it. Uh, Adult Vacation Bible School uh, uh, is today after the service, and all are invited to attend. Even if you didn't uh, reserve, please join us uh, for this time of learning. The, uh, the theme is Christian or Lutheran worship and uh, hymnody through the centuries. Um, and just a brief word about that. Um, immediately after the service, uh, the congregation is invited to uh, go to the fellowship hall for a brief lunch, and then we will re re rejoin together here in the sanctuary after lunch for our time of learning uh, together this afternoon. St. Mark's Men's Group has a number of things planned. Please see the, uh, the bulletin, but there's the August 19th chicken and corn roast, and then on September 9th, Trees Charlotte CEO will be here with us to talk about um, what they do here in Charlotte. Finally, if you're joining us online and have never been to St. Mark's before, please consider joining us for worship at 8.30 or 10.30 on Sunday morning, or call us or email us in the church office that we might be able to connect with you and meet you. We've come to worship our Lord. Let us quiet our hearts now as we prepare for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who looks upon us in compassion, forgives our sin and heals our lives. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy, O God. Against you, you alone, we have sinned. In your compassion, cleanse us from our sin and take away our guilt. Create in us a new heart and give us a steadfast spirit. Do not cast us away, but fill us with your Holy Spirit and restore your joy within us. Amen. As tender as parent to child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven is above earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as east is from west, so far God removes your sin from you renewing your life through Jesus Christ. Blessed be God who crowns us with mercy and love. Blessed be God forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness, and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit, and with this food fill all the starving world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. first reading is from the 55th chapter of Isaiah. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. The word of the Lord. and full of compassion, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in a due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. to all who call 
watch over all those who love you, but all the wicked you shall destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless God's holy name. The second reading is from the ninth chapter of Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it by the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, comes the Messiah, who is over all. God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus had heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who, and those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. In today's gospel, we're given a glimpse of the church. We're given a glimpse of what Christ's church will look like in its mission in the world. The God whom we cannot see is revealed for all of us to see in the compassion of Jesus who healed the sick and fed the hungry. The God who is always otherwise hidden and unknowing is made known to us through our faith active in God's love for this world. In Jesus, we see God as God truly is. 
In Jesus, we see God's love, compassion, forgiveness, and transformation. In Jesus, we experience God's grace. It's like the words of the psalmist that were sung just a moment ago, the eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. This is God's true nature, to seek to satisfy the hunger that's inside all of us. Today's gospel very clearly reveals the humanity of Jesus. Jesus shared our humanity. Like us, Jesus suffered grief and needed time away, alone to pray. Jesus needed time in the compassionate presence of the Father. Jesus' humanity reveals what our humanity is truly capable of. So as today's gospel begins, Jesus hears that his relative John the Baptist has been murdered, and so Jesus withdraws by boat to a deserted place so that he might pray in the compassionate presence of the Father, sensing both sorrow and, and danger, that what happened to John may happen to him, and it was not yet his time to suffer. Jesus withdrew to his deserted place to be in prayer. How many of us can understand this feeling of being overwhelmed by personal tragedy, perhaps the death of a family member, or the death of a close friend. How many of us have sought solitude in, the, in God's compassion in prayer? And yet the crowds with their needs followed Jesus on foot and were there already when he went ashore. The one who sought compassion in prayer responded not by seeking to tell them to come back tomorrow, but Jesus had compassion for the crowds and healed them and their sickness. He didn't ask the disciples to send them away. Jesus demonstrated a profound truth about himself and about his body in this world, the church. We are Christ's body when we live for others and serve others in need with compassion. Jesus knew the church would mean suffering and compassion in this world, and he gives us an example of it. We are the church when we move from prayer and worship in this place outward, using our hands to serve others in this world. We become healed as we serve alongside of Jesus. And yet in this world, I know your pastor can do it and all of us can do it. We can kind of wring our hands and look heavenward and say, God, where are you in this world? We can be overcome with the evil and feel powerless against the misery we see in this world around us. Today's gospel offers us a glimpse of the kingdom of heaven as it is revealed in the person of Jesus. And we glimpse what his body in this world, the church, is truly to be about in this world. God always seeking to work through our hands, serving, feeding, and healing with compassion. God is present in this world. And it's us, it's through our hands that God seeks to be compassionate in this world. And so the gospel tells us it was late in the day. People lingered. They did not go. They lingered to be near Jesus. The hour was late and perhaps it was even getting dark and yet people stayed to be near the light of the world. I imagine that the crowds included many different kinds of people from different ethnicities and backgrounds. So great a crowd would have been very diverse and yet Jesus made no distinction among them. He healed all their sick. Notice that he did not test their orthodoxy or ask them what sect they belonged to or what denomination they belonged to. God's love alive in Jesus met them all equally and healed them. He had compassion for them. If Jesus was worried about food, he did not say anything. 
It was his disciples, you notice, that brought it up. Makes me wonder, maybe the disciples were getting hungry. And immediately Jesus said to them, the crowds need not go. You give them something to eat. These words of Jesus, you give them something to eat, offer us a glimpse of how we, the church, are to act toward those in need in this world. You give them something to eat are words that embody Jesus' command to love one another. I don't think there's ever been a more direct and concrete command of Jesus that gives us an example of loving one another than sharing our food with those who are hungry. Hunger touches all of us. It is one of the most basic human needs, and people hungered to be near Jesus, and they hungered for healing, and they hungered for food, real food and spiritual food. We also glimpse ourselves in this story, standing alongside of Jesus' disciples. Jesus' words to the disciples are also words spoken to each of us. The crowds need not go away. You give them something to eat. And yet the disciples' response was one of fear. They sound defeated to Jesus, saying, we've got nothing, Jesus. We, we don't have anything here. We've got five loaves and two fish and all these people. What are we going to do? The disciples' response, they sound, in the disciples' response, they sound like spectators, looking upon the crowd but powerless, not knowing how to act. We, too, I think, often feel that our resources are outstripped by the needs of the world around us. What we see around us and what little we have, we feel limits our ability to respond. And Jesus said to them and says, says to us, bring what you have here to me. Again, Jesus' words are a command to bring him what little we have so that he might transform what we have into an abundance to allow his mission to happen in this world. Jesus' words, bring them here, are an invitation to believe in his real presence among us. And so Jesus took these five loaves and the fish, blessed them, and gave them back to the disciples, and all ate and were filled. This is what Christ does for us, what Christ does through this church in our ministry, through our hands. At this table, simple bread and wine are transformed to feed us not only in this place, but to continue to feed us throughout the day, throughout the week, and throughout our lives. Simple bread and wine are transformed and they become the means of grace through our hands in this world. God's means of grace are always transmitted through human hands, through our hands. This story reminds me that we also live in a world that has an abundance of food. And yet many in our community go to bed every night hungry. Not for, work, not for want of not working, but because of disparities in our society. And also because we waste a massive amount of food, food that could be used. The food wasted and discarded by restaurants and stores and consumers is staggering. Forbes magazine estimates that 80 billion pounds of food is wasted every year in this country by consumers, restaurants, and grocery stores. That's a number that is just beyond comprehension, 80 billion pounds wasted. And yet many go to bed hungry every night. These words, as I read Forbes, reminded me of the prophet Isaiah that we heard Karen read from a moment ago. The prophet Isaiah speaks for God when he writes, Everyone who thirst comes to the, come to the waters. You that have no money, come and eat. Jesus tells us, you give them something to eat. These words ring out with real compassion. 
that we have abundance in our world already before us, how can we use this abundance compassionately to, f to feed others? The miracle of feeding 5,000, the, fe the feeding of a community, of a city, of the world continues to happen through the hands of the church day in and day out. Crowds continue to come to Jesus for life and healing. Each Sunday, we are fed with the free gift of grace from this table. We come with hands outstretched and receive a bit of eternity, Christ's body and blood in our hands that renew and forgive us. Every week, people are fed and forgiven from this table and then set tables in our fellowship hall to feed the hungry. Every week, I know many members in this congregation bring food to place on the baker's rack, to donate to loaves and fishes, and the miracle of feeding people in this world continues. Members of our Stephen ministry visit the homebound, offering communion and hope, and St. Mark's men's group has recently established an emergency food pantry to respond to the needs of hungry people who come to our door during the week so that we might be able to send them away with something to eat. Jesus wants to work compassionately through our hands. You know, the disciples underestimated Jesus. They didn't think that Jesus could feed the crowds. Makes me want to ask, do we underestimate Jesus? If he asks you to do something, Jesus will give you the strength to do it. If Jesus asks us to do something as a congregation, he will allow us to find a way to do it. We are the hands of Jesus in the world, offering compassion and hope. How is Jesus calling you to help feed, to forgive, to heal, and to act with compassion for others? How is Jesus calling you to use your gifts for others in your daily life as well as in this congregation? You, each of you, are the miracle of faith that feeds others. You are the miracle of compassion that offers hope through your hands to so many throughout the week. Jesus says, you give them something to eat. Jesus needs your hands in this world. Amen.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us be together in prayer. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Lord of compassion, you gather your church together by the Holy Spirit. Inspire and bless all the baptized to proclaim your abundant love through word and deed feeding the world with Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, you have created the earth and the cosmos and given it the breath of life. Work through our minds and hands to develop ever greater goals of sustainable development so that all nations and people might have enough water, food, medication, and energy. For we are all your children. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of peace, as the war in Ukraine continues and violence spreads from India to West Africa, we pray for unity, amity, and accord. We know there is far more that unites us than divides us, and we humbly ask that you bless our leaders and elected officials with guidance and wisdom to bring an end to bloodshed, conflict, and hostility around the world and here at home. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of all, you uphold us when we fall and lift us when we are down. You hear our cries for help and keep constant watch over us. We thank and praise you for the love and care you show us, and we pray that you give us the strength to do the same for each other. We ask for healing and strength for Jay, David, Charlie, Virginia, Joseph, Robert, Rachel, Danielle, Carl, David, Van, Oakley, Arlene, Sergey, Bill, Christopher, Jimmy, Dan, Roxy, Shirley, Ingrid, Martha, Bishop Tim, Lawana, Joe, Tina, Dory, Luther, Mark, Ben, Louisa, Ian, and Mindy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of grace, you sent us your Son who fed the hungry and healed the sick. Grant us the same compassion and bless our efforts to care for our neighbors through ministries like Loaves and Fishes, the Soup Kitchen, the Men's Group Emergency Food Pantry, and our Stephen Ministers. Help us to continue to serve the world around us with the same love that Christ showed to those around him. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the eternal covenant, we give you thanks for the promises made to Abraham and Israel. Bless all your children grafted onto the root of Israel and God's promises. Lead us all by your grace into deeper friendship with one another, and may we feast together in the glory of your kingdom. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace with one another.
us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, O God, creator of heaven and earth. You rescued your covenant people and led them on all their journeys and taught them by the prophets. You so loved the world that you gave your only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come out again. Pour out your Holy Spirit in this meal and make us one in this community of faith and with your people throughout the world. Glory and praise to you, O God, author of life, word made flesh, power of the Most High, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good.
may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, bless you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest sea, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. <laughs>
Please join us for worship at 8.30 or 10.30 a.m. on Sundays with inspiring music and talented musicians as we gather around God's Word and celebrate the sacraments together. We are a congregation that helps children, youth, and families grow together in Christ. With events for children and youth, a confirmation program, educational activities, mission trips and retreats to camps like Luther Ridge that help young people and families grow in faith and service to others. St. Mark's is a place for families and people of all generations to grow together in Christ. St. Mark's is a church with a servant's heart. Each Thursday, St. Mark's Soup Kitchen feeds our neighbors. We also partner with local schools and nonprofit organizations. We participate in Kairos Prison Ministry Weekends, sending cookies as a sign of our love. We follow Jesus in mission, offering food, shelter, and hope to those in need. And we are blessed by local artists, musicians, and ecumenical relationships. There's a place for you at St. Mark's. Please join us for worship and stay with us to serve Jesus Christ by helping others discover God's amazing grace. For more information about worship and service opportunities, please visit us at stmarkscharlotte.org. There is a place for you at St. Mark's. May the peace of Christ be with you.